Hey there, Jim Gavigan, Industrial Insight again. Last video blog, I talked a lot about how you can turn a daily report into a more longer term report. And what I likened it to is a daily report is simply just a map and you know where you're at. You have no idea how you got there, no idea how long it took you, no idea where you're going, any of that. However, it is important to know where you're at right now. And sometimes these daily reports actually do give you uh, some things that you need. And so probably a lot of people walked away from that video or, or came away from that video thinking, gee, what if I just want a static report and all that, you know, long term that do I have to maintain two reports? No, you don't. You can actually do it all in Power BI or Tableau or Spotfire, whatever tool you're using. And the reality is like we're, we're using Pi and the integrator for business analytics, which we think is a great solution to get this data out. However, pretty much any MES system, uh, any historian, you know, anywhere where you're storing this kind of data and you can roll it up like this, you can get data out of it, you can put it somewhere and you can connect it to Power BI and visualize it in a much nicer manner than probably what you're doing now with Excel and or PDFs or whatever tool you happen to choose. I think the BI tools are literally built for the, this kind of an analysis. So with that said, uh, if we look at this this daily report, you know, this is the, the three items I have highlighted, the 143,415, 130, 467, and the million five. Those are all important numbers for them. That is how much they have produced today, <laughs> how much they've averaged this month, and how much they put together month to date. Okay, it's, it's pretty, you know, they, they still wanna know that, right? So let's talk about how we can actually build that in Power BI. It's actually a lot simpler than you think. So what I've done is I've opened up a new sheet in Power BI, and one of the things that I like to do is I like to, to make a black background. I just think it looks nicer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a gauge and I'm going to um, actually do a little bit of, of formatting. I'll make this nice and big. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put their product one production value on here. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of formatting here. And forgive me if I don't remember exactly where I want everything. Let's say I want to change the fill color to, I don't know, yellow. Let's make it a little bit more obnoxious. Okay, let's make the target uh, green, okay? And then I can put in the minimum, like I, if I remember right, um, let's see here. And actually I have a problem with this particular data set. I'm gonna make this the average. This should be one number. It, it should be 148,000. And actually, I probably haven't put any context. That actually may be right. Uh, it's not actually going to matter. But um, let's go back here to this gauge axis. And let's say like the minimum is 100,000. Okay. The maximum is 200,000. Okay. And my target is, let's say it's 150,000. Okay. So now I have that green tick mark that popped up at 150,000. My minimum's at 100. You know, my max is at 200. Um, let's see, I'm going to change some of these colors here. Let's see, data labels on, but let's change this to white where we can actually see it. Actually, data, oh, that's the labels down there. I'll make them, I'll make them white. Let's see, um, target, I want it on, I want that green. Okay, I can actually make that a little bigger. You know, the thing about Power BI is you can do some really, you know, nice formatting. They've, they've done a pretty good job allowing you to be able to, um, you know, to format everything. Now what I'm looking for is this 148 thing right here. Maybe it's the call out value. Hey, there we go. That's what I want. And let's just say I want the actual number. All right, there we go. So now I have a gauge, I have a target, it's not just a number. So how do I wanna make sure I always get today's value? 
Okay, well, the great thing is, is in Power BI, they've, they've actually put in a new filters pane here, and you can do very similar stuff with Tableau as well. Um, you, you're not alone in just being able to do this with Power BI. But one of the things that I did was like the timestamp of this data is, say, say the, the report for today's production, it's going to run at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. So what you're going to think is, well, that's um, October the 9th production. No, it's actually October the 8th. So here's another nice thing about all of these tools is I actually did a, a calculated column, which is production date. Um, and that's just the timestamp column minus one. So it's minus one day. And then you go in here to modeling and I just said, hey, I want to, you know, make it just the date. I don't, I don't need the timestamp. I just need the date. So what I can do now is use that as my actual date slicer. So let's make the, let's put a filter on the page. So production date. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this relative date filtering. Okay. And I'm just going to say is in this day and I'm going to apply the filter. Okay. So today is blank. Um, let's see, did I do the right one? So did I pick the right production date? I didn't actually. So I'm trying not to rehearse this, or at least over rehearse this. So I'm trying to actually see, let you guys see how easy this is to build. And uh, I hadn't thought, thought through something. So if I put production date up on there, it's going to have a production date of October the 8th. Well, we haven't run the production report for the 8th. That'll run on the 9th at 3 a.m. So what I had to do is use the timestamp date in this day and then all of a sudden I have 161,000 pounds produced which is over our 150,000 pound target got it okay good deal so now let's say I want to put together you know a little matrix or something and let's just say or actually I'll, I'll do it this way let me do a card so let me find I don't want a multi-row card I just want a single row card so let's say say I want the the month to date average on here all right, so we'll do product one production as my field. Okay, do a little formatting here. Let's see, da, 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 da. data label, I want that white. All right, so that's good enough. So we can see that. All right, so let's, let's change this to, let's see, here I think I wanna use the production date um, if I remember right, as my my time filter, okay, to get the right answer, I believe. Okay, and now I can do relative date filtering, and now I can say is in this month. Okay, and I can apply the filter. All right, let's change that data label to not be automatic here. All right, so we've done a little over a million pounds this month. Okay, well, let's say I want to do another card. Let's change the size of that. So let's say I want to do another card and I want the month to date average. All right, so I'll just drop this down here. Oops. So here, instead of the month to date sum, I can do month to date average. So now I can see that I'm doing 146,000 pounds on average this month and I'm below my 150,000 pound target. Now I could make another gauge. I could do all kinds of things. I can display this any way I want. But if we go back to that report, what I cared about was how much did we do yesterday because I run this report at the end of the day or like first thing in the morning. You know, like for today's production, I'll run it at 3 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay, so I need to know that number, got it. And I put a little context around it. So that way I understand did I make it? Next, I have how did I do month to date on average? Next, I did how did I do month to date um, total? So I have those numbers now. So now I can understand on the daily report how I'm doing. And the, the great thing is, and I'm not going to do that here, but I can literally put, you know, a button in here. Okay, I can add a button 
and and actually build bookmarks in my let's see I've got to remember where the bookmarks are bookmarks pane there we go all right so I can actually add a bookmark to another page you know I can do a little configuration and actually link that button to a bookmark and go to another page and then put a button on there that takes me back here so the nice thing is is I can build this for someone so that they can interact with the data you know they can drill down through it they can hit a button and go to a different page they can hit a, a button and go back to the page they just came from so the whole idea is I want to make sure that people can interact with the data and not just get this static report that if they have more questions about it they can't answer them or they can't ask them I want them to be able to ask the questions hey here's where I'm at on the map now I want to know how I got here click 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 now they can start to see it so anyway those are some interactions I, that I think you know are really important to build in and and I think this is a huge improvement than a number on the screen now we can pick apart the colorings I actually wouldn't use these colorings honestly I think they're ugly but I did it just because you have full freedom to do whatever it is you want so anyway, hopefully this helps. And again, you don't have to be a Pi system customer. Yes, we do a lot of videos about, about the Pi system and what you can do, but literally you can do this kind of magic on anything. So anyway, hopefully this helps. And hopefully you don't think I just railed on static reports and they're completely a waste of time because they're not. Anyway, hope it helps.